All right, welcome back. We're gonna start with this example right here. We have, if I is an annual effective interest rate of 5%, what is delta T or what is the force of interest? And so this is going to use one of the formulas that we know for the force of interest. And so we know that in the case of an annual effective interest rate, which is a compounded rate, that delta T is equal to the natural log of one plus that effective annual interest rate. And so if we use that formula here, we'll have that delta T is equal to the natural log of one plus 0.05, right? Because our interest rate I is 5%, which would be 0.05 in decimal form. And so this would be equal to the natural log of 1.05, which if we plugged into a calculator is going to give us about 0.0488. And I rounded that off a little bit, but that would be the answer for that particular question. This is the force of interest when we have an annual effective interest rate of 5%. And then we wanna know what is I if we have an annual simple interest rate of 5%, what is delta at time equals two? Or what is the force of interest at time equals two? And so this is going to use the other formula that we know for the force of interest, and that is that delta T is equal to I, or that simple interest rate divided by one plus I times T. And so if we were gonna solve for delta two in this case, we would have that delta two is equal to 0.05 divided by one plus 0.05 times two, right? Because our value of T here is going to be two and our simple interest rate is 5% or 0.05 once again in decimal form. And so if we simplified this, we would have that this is equal to 0.05 divided by one plus 0.1 because 0.05 times two is 0.1. And so this is equal to 0.05 divided by 1.1, which if you plug that into your calculator will be equal to 0.045 and that 45 is going to be repeating. So we'll just stop it there and that would be the answer for that problem. So using these two formulas where this one was for compound interest and our second one was for simple interest, I forgot to write that in there, but there it is. We can find our force of interest given the other types of rates. You just have to remember that for simple interest, you also have to be given a time because T is in that formula. Let's look at another example. So here we have that given the force of interest, delta T is equal to 0 0.07 plus 0 0.006 T, calculate the accumulated value over five years of an investment of $100 made at time equals zero. So we'll start with that, but there is a second question that we will get to after we finish the first one. And so let's make note of a few things. First, we wanna make sure that we know our delta T or our force of interest is equal to this expression right here. And we also know that we're looking at a time period from time equals zero to time equals five. So we're looking at a five year period here. And so our interval for time is from zero to five. And we also know that we make an initial investment of $100. So that's going to be A of zero, and that will be equal to 100. And so now in order to answer this question, we have to know what our future value or our accumulation function is in a force of interest scenario. So if you watched our lesson, you saw that we were able to derive that formula. And so we know that the accumulation at some time in the future N is equal to that initial deposit times E, or I'm gonna write it like this, exponent, of the integral from zero to n of delta t dt. This exp and then parentheses just means we have e, the number e, raised to this power. It's just easier to write like this when we're writing out our work to kind of keep it all straight. And so now let's plug in what we know and then we can solve for a of n, or in this case, n is going to be five because we are going from zero to some n years in the future, which in this case is five. So then we'll have a of five is equal to 100, our initial deposit, times exp of the integral from zero to five of delta t. So delta t is this right here. So we'll write this in parentheses, 0 0.07 plus 0 0.006 t. And that will be dt and another parenthesis. And so now to solve this equation, to solve for a of five, or the accumulated value at year five, we have to go through with this integral here. So hopefully you're familiar with calculus and your integration techniques, and we should be able to do this pretty easily. We'll have that a of five is equal to 100 times exp, and then let's integrate this function. So 0 0.07 is going to become 0 0.07t, because it's a constant, we just multiply it by the variable t. And then we're going to add this to 
0.006 divided by 2 times t squared, right? Remember that when you're doing integration of a variable such as t, you kind of use a reverse power rule from derivatives where you add one to your exponent and then you divide by whatever that exponent is. So we added one to the exponent to get t squared and then divided by two. And instead of this parenthesis, I should have wrote this because we're gonna be evaluating from zero to five. And then we can close with our parenthesis. All right, so now let's go through with that. We'll have the same thing on this side of the equation and we'll have 100 times exp. And then we're gonna be plugging in five into this and then plug in zero and subtract that. But if you notice, if you plug zero into this function, you're just gonna have zero times this value. So we're gonna have zero plus this value times zero squared. So you're just gonna have zero plus zero, which is zero, which means when we evaluate, we would just be subtracting zero. So we're not even gonna worry about that term to save some time. We're just gonna worry about plugging five into this. So we're gonna have 0 0.07 times five plus 0 0.006 divided by two will be 0 0.003 times five squared. And so then if we evaluate this, we'll have 0.35 right here. And then over here, we're gonna have 0 0.075. So I'll write that really quick. And hopefully you can check my work on this, but I do believe that this equals this. And so then we can move on to our final step, which would be the following. We're gonna have a of five is equal to 100. And now I'm gonna switch it to e to the power of 0 0.35 plus 0 0.075, which will be 0 0.425. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, 100 times e raised to this power, we will find that the accumulation at time five is equal to $152.96. And so that would be the answer for the accumulation at time five if we made that initial deposit of $100 at time zero, given that force of interest at the beginning. So now we do have a second question here though. We didn't quite finish this problem completely. We are asked, what is the accumulation if the $100 is invested at time equals two instead? So rather than investing at time equals zero, we invested at time equals two. Well, that's going to change the problem a little bit. But instead of rewriting this entirely, let's talk about what would change. So first off, make sure you write down this answer if you are following along with me. And I'm going to erase this because we're going to redo some of our work here. So instead of having the interval from zero to five, now we're interested in the interval from two to five, right? We're making that investment at time equals two, and we still wanna know the accumulation up to that fifth year. So how is this going to change? Well, this zero is now going to become two instead, because this equation right here is assuming that we're starting at time zero, but if we're not, that zero will change to wherever we are starting, which in this case is two. So in this case, we can actually switch this. So this A of zero equals 100 will become A of two equals 100. And so that means that this equation here would also change. So we'd have this, we'd have a of two, and then from two to n. And so then if we go through our work here, we just have to change this zero and this zero to two. And so most of the work is going to be the same. The integration process will be the exact same until we get to our evaluation step, where now we have to add an extra calculation. So I'll remove this parenthesis because now, unlike when we plugged in zero into this, we're not gonna have zero plus zero, if we plug two in here, we also have a value that we need to account for. And so I'm going to erase this step right here because this is going to change. So let's go through and finish the evaluation of our integral from two to five. And we already have our work from earlier when we plugged in five. And so let me put this in parentheses and we're gonna be subtracting what we get when we plug in two. And so if you plug in two, we're gonna have 0 0.07 times two plus 0 0.003 times two squared. And that is now what is going to be in our exponent for e. So now our next step will be the accumulation of time five is equal to 100 times exp of, and remember from before that when we added this value and this value, we got 0.425. And now we're gonna be subtracting what this equals. So 0 0.07 times two will be 0.14. And then 0 0.003 times two squared, which would be four would be 0 0.012, and so we would have 0 0.14 plus 0 0.012. And so that's going to be in our exponent this time. And so now if we continue our work up here, we'll have that a of five is equal to 100 times e to the power of that 0 0.425 minus 0 0.14 
plus 0 0.012, and so that's going to be 0 0.152. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we will then get that the accumulation of time five is equal to $131.39. And so that would be the answer in this case if our initial investment was made at time equals two rather than time equals zero. So I hope that made sense, that this process is going to be the same. The only thing that changed were our bounds of integration. So now let's look at one more example. All right, so for our last example, we have for the period from time equals zero to time t equals two, the force of interest is defined as follows. So we have delta t is equal to this piecewise function, where we have the function 0 0.06 for the time from zero to one, and then from time from one to two, we have this function. 0 0.06 plus 0 0.02 times t minus one. And then we wanna know if $1,000 is invested at time equals zero, find the accumulation at time one and the accumulation at time two. And so how would we do this? Well, first thing you have to notice is that our delta t or our force of interest has two different functions depending where we are time-wise. So clearly we're gonna be using that formula we used before, right? We're gonna have a of n is equal to a of zero times e to the power of the integral from zero to n of delta t or the force of interest dt. But when we use this, we have to remember that this delta t is going to change between these two time periods. From zero to one, we have one function, and from one to two, we have another function. So we're gonna have to do this in two steps. We're gonna first have to calculate our accumulation for year one, and then we'll be able to find our accumulation for year two, because we're gonna need how much has been accumulated up to that point of year one before we can move past year one. Hopefully that makes sense. And so to cover our first year, we know that our integration bounds are gonna be from zero to one, and our delta t will be equal to 0 0.06. So let's plug in everything we know, as well as the fact that a of zero is equal to 1,000. So let's plug everything in. We'll have a of one is equal to 1,000 times exp of the integral from zero to one of 0 0.06 dt. Now this is a pretty easy integral to solve, and so let's do that next. We'll have a of one is equal to 1,000 times exp of the integral of 0 0.06, right? And that's just going to be 0 0.06t, and that will be evaluated from zero to one. And hopefully it's obvious that when you plug in one, you're gonna get 0 0.06, and then you'll subtract what you get when you plug in zero, which is just going to be zero. So you're gonna have 0 0.06, minus zero, so really we just have 0 0.06. So I'm just going to erase this to save some space. That is all that that integral is going to give us. And so now we can evaluate this. We have a of one is equal to 1000 times e to the 0 0.06 power. And if we plug that into our calculator, a of one will be equal to $1,061.84. So that is the answer to the first part of our question, which is what is the accumulation at time one, but now we need to find the accumulation at time two by using this value we just got. So what do I mean by that? Well, if we're going to calculate the accumulation at time two, we're gonna have a of two is equal to a of one times e to the power of the integral from one to two delta t dt. The reason why we needed this value to calculate this one is because in order to use this function for our force of interest, we have to be going from year one to year two. And so our integration bounds have to match that as well as these two values here. So we're looking at the value in the future at time equals two, but we have to start with that accumulation at time one and integrate from time equals one to time equals two. So I hope that makes sense. And so now we can plug in and solve this one. We'll have a of two is equal and I'm gonna save some space by just writing a of one for now. We'll plug that in when we get to the end, but we'll just have a of one times e to the power of the integral from one to two of this function. Now, I do see that this is going to simplify a little bit, so let's do some side work. We'll have that 0 0.06 plus 0 0.02 times t minus one, and we can distribute this 0 0.02 to each part of this quantity, so we'll have 0 0.06 plus 0.02t minus 0.02. And so then we can combine this 0 0.06 and this negative 0 0.02 to just have 0 0.04 plus 0.02t. And so that's what we're going to actually plug in here. So we'll have that our force of interest is 0 0.04 plus 0.02t. 
and that is what we're going to be taking the integral of. And so if we do that, we'll have a of 2 is equal to a of 1 times e to the power of 0.04t plus 0.02 divided by 2 times t squared, and then we'll have from 1 to 2 for our evaluation. And so all we did for our integration process here is we took our constant and multiplied it by t. That's how we take the integral of a constant. And any integral of 0.02t we took by just adding 1 to our exponent to get 2 and then dividing our coefficient by that exponent. So we have 0.02 divided by 2. And so then we can simplify. We'll have a of 2 is equal to a of 1 times e of this evaluated from 1 to 2. So we're going to start by plugging in 2. And so 2 times 0 0.04 will be 0 0.08. And then we're going to add that to 0 0.01, right? 0 0.02 divided by 2 would be 0 0.01 times 2 squared, which 2 squared would be 4. And then 4 times 0 0.01 would be 0 0.04. And then we'll plug in 1 and subtract that. And so we're going to have 0 0.04 because 1 times 0 0.04 here would be 0 0.04, and then 1 squared would be 1, so then 1 times 0 0.01 is going to be 0 0.01. And so then, if we were to simplify each one of these, right, 0 0.08 plus 0 0.04 would be 0.12, so I'm going to rewrite that. We'll have 0.12, and then we're subtracting 0 0.04 plus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.05, so we'll rewrite that as well. And 0.12 minus 0 0.05 is going to be 0 0.07. And so now we can rewrite this, and I just realized I didn't write this correctly. This should be exp, just like the rest of them, not e. Let me just rewrite that really quick so I don't confuse anyone. That should be times exp. But we can rewrite this anyway to be a of 2 is equal to a of 1, which we said is 1061.84, times e to the power of 0 0.07. And so then if we plug this into our calculator, we would find that a of 2 is equal to $1,138.83. And so that would be the answer for a of 2, or the accumulation at time 2, for this scenario with this force of interest piecewise function. So hopefully you were able to follow all of that work and see how we use the force of interest formulas to solve different problems. All right, so that's all I had for this example's video. So if you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments. But if you don't have any questions, that is all I have for now. So I will see you next time.